Okay, it looks like more people have joined. For those of you who have just joined, um, we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of creating engaging content today. This webinar is great for teachers due to the Quizlet platform, but also teachers who are already using Quizlet but maybe want to learn some tips and tricks around creating sets. Um, so first, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Amalia, and I work on various initiatives to help support our teacher community. Um, Laura, our Director of Marketing, is also here today and will be helping with the Q&A round at the end of the session. So just a quick agenda. So first we're going to go over key terms that I'll be using today in the presentation. Um, then we'll go straight into a product demo um, around how to create a set and how to share your set. Um, finally, we'll have a review of the key points that we've learned today. Uh, and we'll end with a Q&A session with me and Laura. All right, so key terms. Today I'm going to be talking about study sets. So this is what we call the set of terms and definitions you're inputting or studying on Quizlet. And a way to think about this is like a virtual flashcard deck. Um, then the set page, this is the main page of your study set where all your editing and studying features live. Um, and you can see just an example of that over here, this English vocabulary image. This is a set page. Um, and then the create set page. So this is where you go to create or edit your existing set. All right, so let's go ahead and just get into the demo bit. So you can see here that I'm logged into my account. You can always tell that you're logged into your Quizlet account if your username is showing up on the right-hand side. So let's talk about creating a set. There's two main ways to create sets on Quizlet. You can either search for an existing set and customize it by making a copy, or you can create your own set by, from scratch. So um, my favorite way to create content is actually to search for existing stuff and then customize it for my use. It saves me a lot of time, it's super easy, so let's start with that. So if I tap on this search icon, what I can do is enter a keyword, a subject, um, a textbook title, um, and generally, it's better to be as specific as possible in this search that just gets you better results. So let's say um, Spanish beginning phrases is what I want to search today. So you can see that um, a bunch of different options of sets that have already been made by other Quizlet users are popping up in this feed. Um, there's a lot of different options. You can see at the bottom of the page, there's several more pages. Um, so how do I choose this? So these look pretty good, but there are more filtering options if you need them. For example, I could search my most recent. Um, if I was looking for a set with images, I could search for just those. Um, and also, uh, you can search for teacher-created sets only, um, and this is a special feature for our upgraded Quizlet teacher users. Um, but even if you don't have an upgraded account, you can actually um, you know, see who is a teacher. Um, I'll show you that here. So for example, this user has the teacher icon right next to her name. Um, and you know, just generally, if it's created by a teacher, you have a certain <laughs> assumption that um, this set is you know, higher quality. So that's just a tip. But you know, actually, I like this set a lot. This looks really good, so I'm going to go ahead and click into it. And this takes me to my set page. So you can see the title here. You can see the number of terms. You can see who created it. Um, I can go ahead and look at the other terms in this set, and yeah, this looks really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this because I want to save a version to my account to edit you know, as, as I like. So you see here, this is a little toolbar right under the title, and here I see the option to copy the set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now this takes me to the Create Set page. Um, where it has the title and all the terms and definitions already filled in. It has the language selected already. So this is super easy if, you know, this looks like a great set and I just want to make some basic changes. So let's say I want to add a description. This option's right above the title. And I'm going to say to my students, like, please study this tonight. The description can be used for anything. You could describe the content more, but something that we've seen teachers do a lot is actually add a little note to their students here. So I'm going to save that. Um, and then let's say, you know, I like these phrases, but they don't have goodbye, which is a pretty basic phrase. Um, and you can see here, because the language selected on the term side is Spanish, we actually have some helpful, um, you know, uh, accented uh, letters that you can use for typing in Spanish. So if I want to say adios, 
super easy for me to just add that. Oops. Boom. Actually, let's leave that error in there. All right, so this looks great, and I'm ready to go. Um, actually, one more thing to talk about before we leave this page. You'll see on the upper right-hand corner, there's some other options around privacy settings. So by default, Quizlet sets are saved to public. That makes them really easy for people to share. Um, but let's say I wanted to share this with just a certain group of students. I can do that here. Um, there's a certain classes options, which means that if you add this set to a class, it will only be visible to its members. There's a people with a password option, so you can create a password for this set and just share that password with those people. For now, I'm just going to leave this for everyone and save. All right, so now let's go ahead and create. So now you can see that I'm brought back to the set page, but now this set is um, with my username. So this is my set, even though it was copied from that previous set. You can see the description here. You can see all of our terms. You can see our added term. And something that's really cool about this is if I spot a uh, spelling error here, like in goodbye, I can actually edit in line. Just another time-saving trick. OK, great. So this looks awesome. Um, and that is the basic gist of finding a set and making a copy of it to customize as your own. So now let's talk about other ways of creating a set, which is basically to create a custom set from scratch. So as you can see, um, these two options are always accessible on this header. I'm going to go ahead and tap onto the Create icon. So the easiest way to create a set from scratch is actually using our import tool. So let's say I have word lists from last year, and I'm just getting started on Quizlet, and I want to import those words into sets. Um, I would just head over to this import option. And you can see that this section just pops down, and it asks me to copy and paste my data in. So here I have an example word list, just some basic vocab for my students to study. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to paste it into this white box. You can see this preview, this really helpful preview appears, um, filling out my terms and definitions into their appropriate boxes. Um, so you can see that here you have some customization tools. You can separate between term and definition by comma, a custom symbol, same between rows. Um, this preview is really helpful because let's say that you know, if there's a mistake in mine, um, I can actually see that that is going to turn out not so great and fix that right in this tool. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and import. All right. So now you can see that terms and definitions have been filled in really quickly. And now I can type in a title. I'm going to say week one vocab. Again, I could add a description. I could change the privacy settings. Um, but now let's remember to choose our language. So choosing a language is really important, actually, because it's a really great feature of Quizlet that we actually read the audio as your students are studying. Um, and students can hear the audio when they're using flashcards, when they're using Learn, um, if they're just reviewing the terms on the set page. It's really, really great, and we provide 18 different languages of text-to-speech audio. So it's a really helpful feature. Um, so here, it's, it's pretty clear-cut. This is English and English. But let's say um, you know, that I am doing a set in a different language. We have a bunch of different options here. And then actually, here's another great tip for chemistry and math teachers. We actually have separate languages for those. Oops, you can see that. And what's nice about that is that it pops up with these helpful symbols. Same with math. You have all these helpful symbols that you can use while you're creating your content. OK, so let's change that back to English, because that's not math. <clears throat> OK, awesome. So now this set is almost done. Um, again, I can keep adding words. If I decide that from my imported list, maybe I don't want some of these words, it's really easy to delete them. Yep, and you can even move them around. Let's say these were out of alphabetical order. You can move those easily. You can add more. Super easy to do. So this looks great. I'm going to go ahead and create this set. So now we're back on the Create Set page, and we're happy with this set. My students can hear the audio accelerate um, while they're studying. Again, if I'm going to the set, I can edit in line. Lots of cool features here. All right, so let's say 
you don't have an existing word list to import. You're actually just creating your set from scratch or from your notebook, um, from your notes. Uh, let's go ahead and try doing that. So we have a bunch of easy tools for that as well. Let's say we're studying trees and plants. I'm going to go ahead and select my languages because I know it's in English. Um, and I'm just going to start typing in terms. All right. So I've typed in my term, and I've set it to English. And now I'm going to use our auto-define feature. And this is really, really helpful for saving time. What's great about this is that it's a collection of user-contributed definitions in our most popular study sets. So if I type in coniferous, oops, I can tap on that, and I can see a bunch of different definitions to use. So which one do I like? Hmm, I like that one. Great. And it, you can see that it just auto-fills. Let's keep going. Deciduous. All right. Those are pretty good. All right. I like that one. All right. Types of plants. <laughs> OK. So this is kind of a general word. Um, and I'm looking for more context here, right? So a lot of these don't really fit what I'm looking for. But what's nice about this is that I can pop that in, and I can actually edit it, right? So let's get rid of that part and just talk about that. And then I happen to know that it's actually for at least two years. So that's all fixed. Okay. So now let's talk about images. Um, we have heard that images, adding the ability to add images is one of our most popular features, both from teachers and students. Um, so what's great about images is they provide more context for the material you're learning, um, kind of a visual aid, and students can see them while they're studying. So it makes a lot of sense in this set to add images. Um, there's two different ways to add images on Quizlet. You can either use our free gallery, which again is a gallery of collected images that you know appear in other popular public sets on Quizlet, or you can upload your own images. Uploading your images is actually a paid feature of our Quizlet teacher product. Um, so let's start with just adding images from our free gallery. So you can see here I've just tapped on the image icon, and I have a bunch of great options for coniferous. Um, you know, I really like that one, so I'm just going to tap it, and it's there. Same with deciduous, all right? There's some different options here. This one's nice and shows like a, a few different stages, so I'm going to use that. Now perennial, all right. Again, so this is a pretty general word, um, and maybe this isn't exactly what I'm going for, but something that's really um, cool is if I know something like oregano. Oregano is a perennial plant. I can actually change the search term and search again. And now I have much better images, right? So I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Now let's try one more. Let's add one more term to our set, annual. And let me type in a definition for that. <clears throat> a plant that completes its life cycle in one year. Great. Okay, so I kind of already know that the free gallery probably won't give me the best images for this because the word annual is pretty basic. Um, so again, I know that a type of annual plant is a watermelon, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in and search. All right, these are pretty good. These are better. But, you know, I don't really see an image that shows me a watermelon on the vine. So because I'm an upgraded Quizlet teacher, I'm going to go ahead and upload my own image, which is just accessible here. And I can actually choose, you know, an image that I already have, that I found, open, and there we go. And actually, an even more time-saving tip is that if you have, you know, the image on your desktop, you can easily just drag and drop it into this, and it will upload easily. Um, so let's say I wanted to check out this image before <coughs> I publish my set. I can actually easily click to zoom and see, yeah, that's a good image. All right. So this is looking really good. I'm excited about my set. I like my images. I'm going to go ahead and create. Um, one thing that's worth noting is that Quizlet actually auto-saves your content all the time. So as you're creating it, we're saving it. It means that you should never lose any terms that you're um, you know, adding, even if something you know, bad happens to your tab, something like that. But even so, if I'm planning on coming back to my set in a little bit, it makes sense to just save it, create it now. Great. 
So now I'm back to the set page. I have my title. You can see my name here. Um, you can see all of the sets terms that I've added. And again, your students can zoom in on the images if they'd like. They can hear the audio. This is twist. Great. And so let's say the audio um, is good for these terms, but maybe I want my students to hear something else. Maybe a plant that lives for at least two years isn't super helpful for them to hear. Um, so maybe I want to record like a verbal hint that you know talks about this image. Like what are they seeing in this image? Um, so that brings us to our voice recording feature, which is another element of the Quizlet teacher upgrade. Um, and it's super easy and fun to use. I will just go back into my set. All right, so here let's use this term right here. Now if I want to record my own audio, which basically takes over um, the Quizlet uh, added audio, I can just click on this microphone icon. And you can see this little section appears. It allows me to record um, the term and also record the definition separately. And I can even hear the audio before just to make sure this is what I want to do. Perennial. Great. Okay, so let's switch to this side. Um, and I want to say examples are oregano and basil. Examples are oregano and basil. Okay, so that was good, but maybe not the best. So I can do it again if I want to. Examples are oregano and basil. Examples are oregano and basil. Great. So I like that one. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Done. Now I'm brought back to the set page, and let's say I'm your student, um, and I'm studying your set and flashcards. All right. So I'm going to go through my set. I'm going to see that, and I'm actually going to listen to the audio. Examples are oregano and basil. And that provides a great audio hint for me to guess the word perennial. So that's just one use of the, the feature of voice recording. Um, we've seen teachers really use this in a lot of creative ways, from audio hints to example sentences um, to, you know, if someone's teaching music, actually having the, the musical note in there. Or uh, even if you're studying bird calls, right, you could actually record a bird call and listen to that as you're studying the names of the birds. All right, so this is great. Um, one more hidden feature that we're going to talk about today around creating sets. Let's go back to my home page. Just a quick tip, every time you want to get back to your main logged in home screen, just click on the Quizlet logo on the upper left. All right, so here I can see all the sets that I've created and studied. I have my classes, I have my folders. Let's go ahead to my Spanish class. <clears throat> all right, so here's my Spanish class. And you can see that I have a bunch of sets in this class. And let's say, I want my students to study a few of these sets for their upcoming final. I've added all of these sets throughout the semester, and now I want them to study a few for the final. So if I want them to study Spanish family, Spanish colors, and Spanish basics, I can click into any of these sets. And I'm brought back to the set page. All right. And here, I'm going to go back to my handy toolbar, and I'm going to choose more. Under more, I'm going to find combine. So combine takes me to a new page that has the term that I was, or the set that I was on selected. It also has all of the sets that I've created. So this is a pretty long list, and I want to filter it. So I'm going to go ahead and filter by my Spanish class. Mm, that's better. So now I can select the other two sets that I want to combine. Um, let's say you were a student using this. You may want to study it just in some of these modes. Um, but for our use case today, I'm just going to create a brand new set and then share that with my students. <clears throat> okay, so now here we are, back on the Create Set page. And you can see that all of these terms and definitions from these three sets have been auto-filled to create this new set. So again, I can edit this if I want. I can move terms. I can delete terms. I can update images. I can do all of these different things. I can change the title if I want to and say Spanish final. I can add a description, all that good stuff. But you know, this looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and create it. <clears throat> all right, so that goes over most of our um, key points for creating content on Quizlet. But now let's talk briefly about sharing content on Quizlet. So now I have this awesome stuff <coughs> that I want to share with my students. 
Um, and there's a few different ways to do that. So here you can see the share icon, again, on this nifty little toolbar. Let's see what pops up. Okay, so here I can send this to a specific student if I wanted to. I can copy and paste this link really easily. Let's say I have a, um, a class email list, um, and I'm just going to send this out to them tonight so they can study this before tomorrow's test. I can also share on Google Classroom. I can share on Facebook. I can share on Twitter, whatever works best for you. Another way to share with students on Quizlet is actually to add this set to a class or folder. And classes and folders are great ways to organize your material on Quizlet. So generally, we recommend teachers create classes because they're a great way to organize not only your material, but also invite your students to become members of your class. I'm not going to go into the whole um, you know, spiel about creating classes and adding members, um, but it's not that hard. We'll probably do a webinar on it in the future. So for now, remember how I grabbed those sets from the Spanish class? I want to add it back to the Spanish class, and I can do that by just clicking on that button. Um, but let's say, you know, I didn't have a class yet. You can easily, easily create a class from this modal by just filling out these lines here. Description, I could uncheck this box, I could enter a school, or I could select a school that I've already used and just press the create class. And then that set is now in my class. My students are members of that class, they'll see it. Um, if you're just using classes as a, way to, as a way to organize material, you can send your students that class link. Super easy. So the last bit of sharing options we're going to go over today is embedding. So again, this is under more on the toolbar. I'm going to click on embed. And as you can see, this gives me some HTML code that I can actually copy and paste into my website. Um, so any sort of website, this works. You would simply copy and paste it in, and it would show up in one of these modes. You can actually choose which mode you want your students to see it in. And that means when they go to the website, they'll actually see this study set in that mode embedded on your website, which is a great way to allow them to study right then and there. Awesome. So I think that about covers it um, for creating content and sharing content. So let's go quickly back to our webinar presentation. So let's just do a quick review of what we've learned today. First off, there's two main ways to create a set on Quizlet. You can either search and create a copy of your set and then customize it how you want. That will save a version on your account that you can go back and edit at any time. Um, or you can create a custom set from scratch, which means pressing on the Create Set button, entering your title, terms, definitions, languages, descriptions, um, images, and custom audio if you have that feature. You can also use the import tool if you have existing word lists. As for sharing your set, there's a lot of different ways to do that as well. You can share via link, email, Twitter, Facebook, or Google Classroom. You can create a Quizlet class and add your sets and invite your students to your class. Um, and actually, when you add a set to your Quizlet class, your students get an email notification that a new set has been added. So that's another great feature of classes. Um, and finally, you can embed your study sets on any other LMSs or websites you use. And again, all of these options are just available in that toolbar under, under the set title on the set page. All right, and just a quick review of what your students can do once they've received your set. <laughs> they can actually study it. And again, these are options that are available on the set page. The flashcards, learn, spell, test, match, and gravity. These are great modes for them studying on their own in class or at home. And then we also have Quizlet Live. Again, we're not going to go too deep into this, this webinar. But this is a great teacher-led in-class game. It's the first game that Quizlet designed specifically for teachers to lead and use with their students in class. So if you're interested in learning more about that, make sure to check out our demo. Um, and we'll make sure to add that link to the chat box later. All right, and then another quick note. Um, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me. Both Laura and I are getting over colds. <laughs> but. Um, about the app. So our apps are awesome. They're free to download. We have an app for iOS and Android. Um, you can create sets on it. You can upload your images if you have um, an upgraded account. Um, our apps work offline, actually, in sync with the website. So it means that students can really study anywhere. So very, very convenient for you and your students. All right. So now we have Q&A. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions that we've gotten so far. 
Yeah, I got. I can get us started. Great. Um, Conrado asked, uh, "When will you have colors for letters instead of bold?" And uh, and the answer to that is. Um, <laughs> So I think this question is about being able to do further text customizations yep. on on uh, study sets. And the answer right now is we don't have any immediate plans to add further text customization to study sets. That said, you can bold right now. Yeah. And you can also, um, if you are creating a set, any content you put in between parentheses on the definition. Um, you can think of it as a hint for your students. So um, it won't be read out loud if they are using the audio feature. And it also won't be, you don't need to uh, type that part in parentheses in if you are using the learn mode, for example, which requires you to type answers. So um, we think we have a lot of great things in the works around um, helping students learn uh, more content, bigger <laughs> breadth of content, but right now um, we don't have any immediate plans to add that kind of advanced text formatting. Right. And just as, um, you know, following what Laura just said, here I've bolded the word by adding asterisks um, in edit set mode. Um, and then actually I've added some text in parentheses, and if we hear this audio now, Bruno's sister in law, you'll see that that parentheses text or text in parentheses isn't read aloud. Um, all right, I see a question. Uh, it says, who are the interpreters of the language options? Are they actual speakers of the language chosen? So you can imagine with so many words uh, on that are available to type that it's not, our text-to-speech mode isn't, isn't an actual person who's reported every single word. Um, but we use two different services um, for those who are curious. One's called Loquendo and one's called Neospeech. Um, and they essentially are automated services that, um, that read, out, read out the text. So when Amalia was clicking on things, you can, you can hear it's not, it doesn't sound like human, it sounds a little bit robotic, um, but the accents should be pretty good for those learning a new language. So, yeah. Um, so Hola, ¿cómo estás? You can see that that's why it's so important to select the correct language on your terms and definition sides, because for the languages that we do support text-to-speech audio, we can actually read that in that accent, in that language. It's totally good. So it's pretty good. Um, something that I would say, another plug for voice recording, which is that upgraded product that we um, you know, demo today. Um, for language teachers, they often really like that feature, because if they do find something that you know, doesn't have the best pronunciation, or maybe isn't using the exact accent they're looking for, they can easily record their own voice and their own audio on the sets for their students to hear. Um, okay, we have another question from Kimberly who asks, can the audio play back a definition that's written in English in another language like Spanish? So I think the question is, could you create a set with English on both sides and then have the audio be in Spanish, and that's not an option right now, but what you could do is put it in parentheses, right? So you could put your English in parentheses and then record your own Spanish. I, I think that's what you're asking, um, but in general, the way to do that would be to put content in English on one side and then put your content in Spanish on the other side and make sure you select the right language. Yeah, if you do select the wrong language, um, it usually isn't a huge issue, but it just sounds a little funny. Um, like if we selected Spanish for this English side, it would just read it with that same accent. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to do that, you could, but it's not generally something that we recommend. Uh, okay. Uh, we see. Um, why, I see a question from Vicky. Why are all these six options not available on iPad? So our mobile apps um, support four different options. Um, they support flashcards, uh, learn mode, uh, match, and test. And test. So they don't support all the options that you see here. Um, in general, I would say that the mobile apps are really powerful for students, but they don't necessarily have all the content creation tools that the website does. So I would suggest using our website to create study sets and then 
encourage your students to use the apps to study them. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. And you know, we're constantly working on bringing, um, you know, more feature parity between our apps and our website. Um, it just is that our website is so much older; it just has way more capabilities. Um, so we have some catch up to do with our with our mobile apps. Um, okay. Let's see if we have some other good questions. Is it possible to use multiple choice type of questions? Okay, so that's a really great question. Um, let's go back to an example. So something that's great about these kind of general term side and definition side of your set is that you can kind of enter whatever you want there. Um, so if I wanted to enter, you know, a vocabulary word and then an example sentence, I could do that. Or if I wanted to enter, um, you know, a word and then a fill in the oops, fill in the blank sentence, I could do that, right? So fill in the blank. You can format it however you want. Um, what's worth noting about doing that, though, is that it means that the study modes that your students are using to study your material won't work very well. Um, so if we go back to this example, you can see that in these study modes, <coughs> maybe on flashcards, this would work, right? Because you'd see the term, you'd see like the example sentence, or you'd see the fill in the blank, or you'd see the multiple choice. But if I go into a different study mode that's testing my knowledge in a more kind of advanced way, then I'm not going to be able to type in a bunch of multiple choice questions. Um, if you did do multiple choice, I would just let to, your students know that they can choose um, what to see first. So let's say you wrote your multiple choice options um, in the question half or in the term side of the set. Make sure that they're seeing the term first so that they can type in the definition, which would just be, you know, uh, answer A, so-and-so, if that makes sense. So yeah, you can definitely do it. You just have to be aware that in some of the study modes, it might make it more difficult for your students to study that way. I see two questions about how much things cost, from one's from Marinella and one's from Rosa. The questions are, is it free to create classrooms, and is the app free for students? So um, Quizlet is free for students to use and for teachers to use. Um, our apps are free to download. And for teachers, you can create up to eight classes with the free account. Um, if you would like, we, we chose the number eight because we think about a typical teacher teaching a lot of different classes or a lot of different periods. Um, that should be enough to cover them for you know, a semester or an academic year. But if you want to create more classes than that, you can upgrade to Quizlet Teacher, which in the US is $34.99 per year. And that gives you some of the advanced content creation tools that Amalia went over, including um, voice recording and image uploading, in addition to the ability to create unlimited classes. Uh, in terms of what things cost or the price for students, so Quizlet is free for students to use. The apps are free to download. It's free to sign up and study. Um, but for students, we have a similar subscription that's $20 a year that gives them content creation tools uh, similar to what you get in the upgraded account for teachers. So if you're a student, um, you can upload your own images to your study sets, for example, um, and also access some additional, additional features. Um, but for the vast majority of students, um, free, quiz, free Quizlet has everything they need. Yeah. Um, and I would say for teachers, that different teachers have different needs. So take a look at what these upgraded options give you. Um, but you can certainly use Quizlet in your classroom with you know, hundreds of students without needing to upgrade. That's right. And something that I just want to bring attention to, so I navigated um, from this uh, drop-down near my username, I navigated to the Teachers page. Um, and that gives me you know, some things to learn about Quizlet, how to get started. So this is actually a great resource to share with other teachers who are new to Quizlet. It also gives me more information about Quizlet Teacher. Um, and something that I just wanted to highlight, it, that the normal price of $34.99 applies to a one-year subscription for a single account. Um, if you and your colleagues are interested in purchasing multiple accounts, we also offer uh, discounts for that. So here I can easily plug in, you know, I'm purchasing 10. I can see my savings here. 
um, I can customize my receipt and I can, sh I can actually create an invoice if I need to send that to um, my school administrator, that sort of thing. Um, so a lot of different options for upgrades. Um, let's see. All right, so we also had a question. Can you elaborate on how students can join a class? Um, I put a link to um, setting up classes on Quizlet in the chat area. You can see on your sort of your toolbar. Um, and that has some great information on how to set up classes and invite students to, to your classes. And then I would encourage you um, to also check out our Help Center, which has uh, a lot of great material on how to join classes, how to create classes, etc. The easiest way to do it as a teacher is to send your students a join link, which Amalia just highlighted. And essentially, any of your students will, once they uh, get that link and click on it, they can easily join your class. Yep, that's definitely the way that we recommend. That being said, there's a few different options. Oops. Um, you can uh, invite people you know, with a bulk email invite. You can share the join link. Um, you can even use Google Classroom. Um, so a lot of different cool ways and <coughs> to follow up with that in our Help Center. Um, again, this handy drop down near my username. You can easily go to the Help Center and search all sorts of topics, including um, you know, here's a great teachers section. And there's a lot of great material on how to create classes, how to add students to classes, that sort of thing. So this is a great resource. We can also um, add this link to the Help Center into the chat box. All right. Um, I see a question that says, is there an upgrade where there are two columns for terms, e.g. English and another language for language learners? Um, I think what this is asking is if there is a, a way to do sort of three-sided flashcards. So um, create two terms and a definition, or a term and two definitions. And that's not something we offer right now. Um, so I think there's a bunch of different ways you can play around with formatting on your study sets, including some of the multiple choice um, ideas that Amalia presented, or using images and audio. But for now, um, it's really one one suite of terms and one suite of definitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and like Laura just said, uh, a lot of teachers have kind of created a third side by using that voice recording piece. Um, so again, you could record anything you want there, but it could kind of act as a third side of your card. Um, I see a question that says, can you show how to change to private, from private to public and back on a study <laughs> set? So this is sure. um, about if you are creating a study set and maybe you want to keep it private because you're not ready to share it with your class yet, yep. or you know, maybe for example, you, uh, it's a test review for one section and you're giving a, that test and you don't want another section to be able to see the test, mm -hmm. review questions, there's a number of reasons why you might want a private set. Um, and so we give you options on to, to control who can see a set. Yep, so as you can see, I just clicked on the edit icon on my set page. Um, and just right on the right towards the title, I can change my privacy settings. So what this brings up is who can view and who can edit. Um, again, these are the default settings. Everyone can view and I can only edit, um, which you know makes a lot of sense for most sets. But for this, let's say I only want to share this with a few students. I can create a password. Um, whoops. Um, I can, this might not be long enough, actually. Um, or if I have classes created, I can add it to my class. right? So we kind of reviewed this. Um, if I tap into any of these, it will be added to that class, and its privacy setting will be visible to class members only. That means that anyone else can't access the set. The only way that you can is if you're a member of the class that it's in. Um, so that's a really popular privacy setting for teachers. Um, and again, if you are just working on it, and this is like a draft, and you don't really want to make it public yet, you can just make that just you. Um, and that means that you're the only one that sees your set. It won't show up in search results. It won't show up on any... Um, other pages. It will only be accessible by you when you log into your account and click into it. So, you know, I'll go ahead and save that. Um, done. Boom. Now it's totally private. Um, again, no one would see this set, but if I wanted to check um, its privacy setting, I can see now it's viewable only by me. And that's my username. It's editable only by me. And to change that, I simply go back into this set at any time. 
change that, and change it back to everyone. So again, when I chose just me, these editing options disappeared because it doesn't make sense. No one else can see it, no one else can edit it anyway. But they do appear for this. All right, so hopefully that answered your question. All right, I see uh, a question about Quizlet Live. In addition to the invitation code, is a link necessary as well? So if you want to play Quizlet Live with your class, um, once you hit the Live button, it's not going to work for that one. It won't work because that's a private. <laughs> it, doesn't have, it doesn't have terms. Yeah. Um, you're any for any, any given set. If you hit the Live button. Um, Oh, that's not enough terms either. Okay, so you have to have at least 12 terms. <laughs> there we go. This should work. Okay, let's do it. Got to practice our phrases. Okay, so as a teacher, I went to my set. I clicked on the live button, and I can create a game here. So this is the link that shows the special code um, that your students need to plug into when they go to quizlet.live. So if they're using a smartphone, um, they can enter quizlet.live, enter their URL. If they're using a laptop, same thing. As soon as they get there, they'll have to enter this this um, this code in order to join your game. Yeah, and they don't need to be they don't need to have a Quizlet account or be signed up, and they also don't need like the Quizlet app. So all they need yep. is quizlet.live. It's it's very very straightforward. Um, and again, if you want to learn more about Quizlet Live, um, you can easily do so. Just going to go back quickly. Um, I generally go to the Help Center. That's kind of my my hub, and then I can see Quizlet Live up here, and it's just Quizlet.com/features/live. We'll make sure to add this to the chat box. Um, but this tells you everything you need to know about Quizlet Live: um, getting started, viewing a demo, which actually takes you through what your students see when they play, um, watching a video about students using it in class, um, all that good stuff. Great. Um, I see a question that says, if you select just me, can you still send a link to a couple of students? And the answer is no. <laughs> if it's just you, you're the only one who can see it. So if you want to share it privately, the best way to do that is probably to share it with a password. Mm -hmm. um, and you can keep your it private so it's not findable in search or um, findable on, on the greater web. But you can share with a few students and give them the password, and then they can, they can yeah. see it and study it. So. If you do share that link with them and they click on it, they'll just see a little notification that says, this set is private to only this user. Sorry about that. Um, I see a couple of questions about people who um, people who are having some questions about how class progress works. Mm. And um, for those teachers, I would ask you to submit a question through our health center, um, only because it's hard to diagnose why one thing might be showing up in your account or you might not be seeing something um, without knowing how your classes are set up or how you're using class progress. So if it's specific questions about your account or how your students use Quizlet, please get in touch to our help center with our help center. Um, we, uh, we love answering questions from teachers. Um, we yep. have a really great team here that works closely with all of our users to make sure they have a great time on Quizlet. Um, I see, I think this is probably a good question to end on, which is, will this webinar be available to share with colleagues? And we're recording it, so um, we, once the webinar is over, we can edit it um, a little bit and mm -hmm. send it out to those of you who attended and also those who weren't able to attend um, and make sure that you have access to these resources. Yep, that's great. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, again, we're really excited about doing more of these webinars, and hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, at the end of the webinar, there will be a short survey asking your feedback. Um, if you, you know, have already left the webinar or are not seeing the survey, we'll also email it out to you. So thanks in advance for taking the time to complete that. Um, and yeah, we're hoping to do a bunch more topics on creating classes, how to use class progress, all that good stuff. So make sure to check in with our blog. Um, which is just right over here, and of course accessible um, from your homepage. We'll make all sorts of announcements on this blog. We'll also post to our social, um, you know, our Facebook and our Twitter account. Um, so make sure to follow us if you want updates about our webinars.